Hippocrates, Peri Aeron, Hudaton, Topon, Chapter 9. Chapter 9 is about the fifth and final type of water, water from multiple and diverse sources. Perimen un ombrion hudaton, caiton apokionos, cae crustalon, hutos eke. Such are the properties of rainwaters and of those from snow and ice. Atque sic quidem de pluialibus et nevalibus ac glacialibus aquis res se habet. Litiosi de malis de anthropoi, cae hupo nepretidon, cae stranguries haliscontae, cae ischiadon, cae celae ginontae, hocu hudata pinusi pantora potata, cae apopotamon megalon, es hus potamoi heteroi embalusi, cae apolimnes, es hen raumata pola, cae pantora pa apignantae. Cae hocosoi hudasin epactoisi creuntai, diama cru agomenoisi caimeic bracheos. Those most suffer from lithiasis and are seized by kidney disease and strangury and sciatica, and scrotal ruptures occur where they drink highly diverse waters, be it from large rivers into which other rivers flow, or from a lake fed by many streams of various sorts and whenever they use foreign waters imported from a great, not a short distance. Calculo vero maxime laborant homines, et ex renum affectionibus, et urinae stilicidio, et coxendicum morbo corepiuntur, et hernae fiunt, ubi aquas omniganas bibunt, et de magnis fluminibus in quae alia deferuntur, et de stagno, in quod, fluxiones multae ac omnis generis deveniunt, et qui aquis invecticiis utuntur, quae ex longo et non brevi locorum intervalo afferuntur. Ugar hoionta heteron heteroi e oikenae hudor, ala tamen glucea enae, ta de halucate cae stupteriodea, ta de apotermon reen. For it isn't possible that one water be like another, but rather some are sweet, and others are salty and aluminous, and others flow from hot springs. Easily inferred from the preceding u hoyonta is an ananke that governs the infinitives enai and rein in the infinitives that follow. Non enam fiiri potest ut alia aqua similis sit alii sed ala ai dulces sunt, ala ai salsae et aluminosae, ala ai decalidis fluunt. Sum miscomena de tauta es tauton, a leloisi stasiasden, cae craten ae to iscurotaton. And all these waters, once they are mixed up together into the same place, engage in internal strife and the strongest element always prevails. Ubi vero hae simul inter se miscentur dissident, et quae fortissim est semper superat. Iscue de uc ae tauto, ala alo te alo catata pneumata. Toi mengar boreis ten iscun par ecetai, toi de honotos, caeton loipon peri, hoitos logos. But the prevailing element is not always the same. Sometimes it is one, sometimes another, as a function of the winds. Boreas gives its strength to one, notos to another, and similarly with the other winds. Praevalet autem non semper eadem, sed alaas alaa, sed et exventis, ala i quidem boreas robur exhibet, ala i vero auster, et de reliquis e adem ratio existet. Hypistas tae un, toisi toiutoisin ananke, en toisin angeoisin ilun, cae psamon, cae apotuton pinomenon ta nosemata ginetae ta pro eremena. Such waters, then, must leave a sediment of mud and sand in the vessels they are collected in, 
and drinking them causes the diseases mentioned before, that is, lithiasis, kidney disease, strangury, sciatica, and scrotal ruptures. Talibus igitur necessest limum et arenam in vasis subsidere, et abhis si potentur morbi praedicti fiunt. Hoti de uc hapasin hexes prasa, that these diseases, however, don't strike everybody indistinctly, I will explain, and rendered a little differently by Cornarius, quod autem non omnibus consequenter declarabo. This is because some editors of AWP have taken hexes with hapasin, so Diller and Juana, some with prasa, so Cornarius and so the Loeb. In AWP, man, collectively, is determined by his environment. The itinerant physician, arriving in a town whose prevalent winds are from the south, will find a population whose constitution is phlegmatic and humid, bilious and dry if the winds are from the north. Because of these conditions, the population as a whole will suffer from certain diseases, perhaps differently according to age and gender. In AWP, man, collectively, also reacts to his environment. For example, the population will react to the different types of spring water, perhaps differently according to each individual's overall state of health. Here in Chapter 9, on water that is formed from multiple and diverse sources, the author goes a step further. Besides environmentally determined constitutions, Individuals are also born with inherently different constitutions which react to the environmental factors differently. From among the diseases the author mentioned that are due to drinking water formed from multiple and diverse sources, he chooses lithiasis for his example. He opposes two inherently different constitutions of the bowels and bladder. One of these constitutions is susceptible, one not, to the formation of stones after drinking such waters. Hokoson men heta koilie euro oste kai hugiereesti kai hekustis me piretodes me de hostomakos tes kustios xum pepraktai lien, hutoi men di ureosi re idios kai en te kuste uden xustrepetai. Those whose bowels are well flowing and healthy and whose bladder is not feverish and the mouth of whose bladder is not too narrowed, these urinate easily and no concretion forms in their bladder. Quorum quidem alvus satis fluid est axana et vesica non ardens neque stomacus vesica valde coardescit hi facile urinam eiceunt et in sica nihil ipsis congregatur. Hocoson de an hecoelie piretodes e, annanke kai ten custen tau to pasken, hocotan gar termante malontes pusios, e plegmenen autes hostomacos. But for those whose bowels are feverish, it is necessary that their bladder is in the same state for when it is unnaturally heated, its mouth is inflamed. Quorum vero alus ardens ac ferwida fueret, in his necessest etiam vesicam idem perpeti, cum enem magas quam pro natura fueret calefacta, stomacus ipsius inflamatur. Hocotanda tauta pathe, to uron uc apiesin, al en he oite exun epse, kai exun kae, kai tomen lactotaton autu, kai catarotaton die, kai ex uretae, to de pacutaton, kai zolodestaton, zustrepetae, kai sum pegnutae. Tomen proton micron, epeta mesdon, gignetae. And whenever the bladder is in this state, it does not expel the urine but concocts and heats the urine within itself, and the finest and purest part of the urine moves through it and is passed, but the thickest and muddiest part concretizes and congeals, 
at first the concretion is small, then it grows. Ubi vero haec perpetitur urinam non dimittet, sed in se ipsa concoquit et aduret, et quod quidem tenuissim in ipses excernitur, et quod purissim est transit et emingitur, quod vero crassissim ac turbidissim est coacervatur et concrescit, primum quidem parvum deende maius fit. Culindelmanon gar hypo tu uru, hoti an xun iste tai pa cu xun armos de pros he oito, kai hutos auxitaite kai porutai. For as the concretion is rolled about by the urine, it coalesces with whatever solid matter forms, and so it grows and is hardened. Dum enum volvetur aburina, quicquid crassum compactum fuerit, ad se ipsum adaptat, atque sic augescit et in totum concrescit. Cae hocotan ure, prostan stomacon tes custios prospipte, hupo tu uru pias dominon, cae colue uren, cae odunen par eke iscuren. When one urinates, the concretion, forced by the urine, falls against the mouth of the bladder, and stays the flow of the urine, and causes violent pain. Et cum urinam emittet, ad vesicae stomacum alabitur ab urina impulsum, et urinae emissionem impedet, et dolorem vehementem exhibet. Hosteta aidoia tribusi cae helcusi ta paedia ta lithionta. Doce gar autoisi, to aition entauta enae tes uresios. As a result, boys that suffer from lithiasis rub and pull at their private parts, for it seems to them that the cause of their making water lies there. Quare pueri calculosi frecant ac trahunt pudenda, videtur enim ipsis causa mictionis eo loco esse. I'm sure you've noticed by now how analogously, similarly, or identically, biological processes on the one hand and cosmological or meteorological processes on the other are conceived. When the urine is blocked and cooked in the bladder, it separates into two parts. The thinnest part is passed, toleptotaton autu, while the thickest and muddiest part is left behind and concretizes topacutaton kai tolodestaton. In evaporation, there is also a separation. The sun draws up the thinnest part of the water, toleptotaton, while the heaviest, briny part, tolhalmiron, is left behind. The same occurs in the process of atmospheric coction that follows evaporation. The moisture from evaporation in the atmosphere separates into two, and the muddiest part, to toleron, becomes mist and fog, while the lightest part, to cupotaton autu, is left to cook in the sun, just as the urine cooks in the bladder. When snow and ice congeal, there is also a separation. The bright and light and sweet part of the water disappears and the muddiest part, totolodestaton, remains. We have an appendix to chapter 9 that further illustrates this parallel in cosmological and biological theory on the part both of medical authors in the Hippocratic corpus and the pre-Socratic pusiologoi. Tecmerion de hoti hutos eke, Togar uron lamprotaton urelsin hoi litiontes, hoti to pacutaton kai tholodestaton autu mene kai xustrepetai. That my account is correct is shown by the fact that sufferers from lithiasis emit the clearest urine, as the thickest and muddiest part of it remains and solidifies. Signum autem eus quod haec ita se habent hoc est. Urinam splendidissimam calculosi mingunt, eo quod id quod crassissim est ac viliosissim istic manet et co acervatur ac concrescet. 
while the other Greek manuscripts read Tholodestaton, the Vaticanus has Kolodestaton, hence Cornarius's Biliosissimum. Those whose inherited constitution tends to feverish bowels are prone to lithiasis as explained. But speaking of lithiasis, there is also another cause. Tamen pleista huto lithii, ginataide poros kai apo tu galactos en me hugieron e ala thermonte lien kai kolodes, tengar koilien dia termine kai ten kustin. Hostato uron zunkaiomenon tauta pasken. In the majority of cases, this is how lithiasis comes about. However, a stone can also come from the milk, if it is not healthy but too hot and bilious, for it completely heats the bowels and the bladder, so that the urine, being heated with it, experiences the same effects. Et plerique sane hoc modo lapidem et calculum contrahunt, fit autem pueris etiam ex lacte si non salubre id fueret sed valde calidum ac biliosum, ventrem enem per cale facet et vesicam, quare urina dum aduretur haec patetur. Caepe me amenon enae toisi paideoisi ton oenon hos hudaresta ton didonae, heson gar tas plebas xun cae cae sun au aene. And I say it is better to give young children wine, as diluted with water as possible, for it heats and parches the vessels less. Et sane cense o meleus esse pueris vinum quam aquosissimum dare, minus enum venas adurit ac resicat. To summarize, lithiasis is one of the diseases people who drink water formed from multiple and diverse sources experience, but only those whose inherited constitution tends to feverish bowels. To close out the subject, the speaker adds a distinction between the sexes. Toisi de telesi litoi uginontai homoios. With females, stones do not occur in the same way. Muleebrabus autem pudendis non similiter contingit. If you're paying attention, you'll wonder how Cornarius's Latin here is a translation of the Greek. Cornarius was using the Vatican manuscript, which erroneously read litoi u as idoiu, an easy mistake for a copyist to make because of the Greek unsealed script and lack of word separation. In his 1538 Greek edition of the Hippocratic writings that preceded his Latin translation, Cornarius slightly amended this to toisi de telesin idoios uginetai homoios, Mula ebrebus autem pudendis non similiter contingit. Hogar ureter bracusestin hotes custios, cae eurus, hoste biasdestai to uron re idios. Utegar te keri tribe to aidoion hosper to arsen, ute haptetai tu ureteros. Escarta aidoia xuntetrentai. Hoi de Andres uc el thiu tetrentai, di oti cae hoi ureteres uc el reis, cae pinusi pleon e hoi paides. For a female's urethra is short and wide, so that the urine is easily expelled. Nor in fact does the young girl rub her private parts as does the boy, nor touch the urethra. For the urethras in girls have been channeled directly into the pudenda, Men, by contrast, have not been channeled in a straight line, that is, directly to their genitals. For that reason, their urethras are not wide. Moreover, girls drink more than boys. Me aptus enum urinae in vesica brevis est et ampleus, ut facile urina impelatur. Neque enum manu pudendum fricat veluti masculus, Neque urinae in vesica me atum contingit, ad pudenda enum perforatus est, et quia me atus sunt ampli etiam plus 
bibunt quam pueri. You can see further discrepancies between the Greek text here, which is Juana's, and Cornarius's Latin. In fact, going all the way back to Galen in antiquity, readers and editors have had issues with parts of this sentence. Some have excised the entire phrase Esgarta Aidoia through Eures. Within that phrase, should it be retained, the manuscripts are unanimous in reading Kai Dioti, but for this to make sense, you would have to excise the uk in uk eures and have the clause apply to females. Most editors have therefore substituted the order dioti kai. Others have excised the seemingly extraneous and suspicious closing observation that girls drink more than boys. Here, for example, is what Diller did. He retained the Esgar Ta Aidoia clause as well as the Kai Dioti order of the manuscripts, but he excised the Dioti and he excised the final clause. Habent Sua Fata Libelli. Chapter 9 completes AWP's treatment of waters as a factor in health. At the end of some of the earlier chapters, we introduced you to Asclepius and Greek temple medicine, and after chapter 8, we added an appendix to introduce you to the study of the pre Socratics and the evident intersection between AWP and those pre Socratic philosophers Aristotle called Koi Pusi Koi. In this vein, we've added an appendix to chapter 9 to introduce you to two more works from the Hippocratic corpus on the sacred disease and on ancient medicine, which will further touch on the intersection between Greek medicine and Greek philosophy, as well as what we might call Greek magico-religious medicine. If you're interested, please take a look at this appendix. Otherwise, proceed to chapters 10 and 11, the final videos for this AWP project, The Effects of the Seasons on Health.